what we did is we took the normal heat speed out of the control board, came down here to the common on the relay, came out of the relay to the high speed, which is what they had originally. I'm assuming they had problems with the temperature rise. So on the other speed, the cooling, which was low speed, we're gonna go with the normally open, and we're gonna power that off of the common going straight up here to where the transformer's at. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, you know I don't do a lot of residential anymore, but we got some friends that uh, needed some help, so I came over here to look at it for them. And it's my old favorite Linux. So that right there was packed with that right there. We still haven't gotten to some of this. I'm literally having to brush some of this off just because the garden hose don't have enough pressure to knock it off. Starting with the usuals, push contact, you're in, it ran. So surprisingly, the capacitor's still good. Uh, once I got this off, I'll go ahead and wash it out or wash it out. It's, it's pretty bad. He said the house might be a mess. I said, no big deal. I said, I usually get anywhere from 7,000 to 20,000 views. I said, nobody will know. And there's a good chance it might be something to do with the thermostat. And of course, nobody's here. I've got to find some of this stuff. I don't know where everything's at either. So I brought, the, brought my apprentice there with me. She's over here in the truck. So she only want to come over here and look at anything. Thought, hey, we'll get this done real quick, hopefully. And then uh, we can go get ice cream and ride around and enjoy the weather because it's actually warm. Yeah, that hose is barely strong enough to even get through it. Good golly. And I bet you this is two layers of freaking coil too. But I would say anything's better than what we had prior to. That is pretty bad. I swear I, they had problems last year. I asked them, did you clean the coil out? Does the little capacitor thingy look bulged? I guarantee you that ain't been cleaned for at least, at least three or four years. Yeah, is this even coming through? That's actually coming through. Look at that, it's actually coming through on the other side. So that's one thing nice about having a filter um, of dirt on it, that it doesn't get much worse after it's pretty much plugged up. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this thing back together. It's a lot better than what it was. I had clear water coming through. It's, this water pressure is not very good. So somebody painted over top of all the decals there. So kind of kind of can guess what you've got to work with here. And it might have a little something here. Here we go. We've got a 13 sear, two and a half ton unit. It was built in 2012. All right, good deal. Well, let's see if we can get inside this house. I still... Haven't figured out where the keypad is for that yet. So I found the thermostat and I peeled some of this off and it's 410A, which of course you can tell the fan's not running because look at the suction line. He said he changed the thermostat so he may not have gotten everything back together quite right. Let's look at his thermostat. The company I worked for most likely installed this long ago. We've got one of these Honeywell stats that I don't really like. <laughs> What is this? Yeah, because he said heat worked. And there's the jumper. So the jumper's there. That green looks like it might be about all the way out. And then it's hooked in there. Tell you what, let's go grab a little screwdriver and we'll jump it over to R and see if the fan comes on. Got a killer dog here. She didn't even say nothing, did you? I won't tell, I already did tell on you, sorry. Okay, the power just cut out a second ago. Luckily came back on, let's jump this down to R. I heard a click. Heard a click and I don't hear a blower. So we've got blower motor or we have a control board out. I'll go ahead and clean that up for him because that looks like a rat nest. Okay, it looks a little bit better now. It's a little bit less jiggity jiggity. I'm not ripping the whole thing off the wall. Definitely wouldn't probably hurt to tighten it up a little bit. There we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this back on. At least it's a Honeywell, but definitely is one of their lower end ones that any of these buttons, I've had all kinds of problems with that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, so let's go ahead and turn the cooling off, turn the blower on. Let's go over here and look at the furnace, which is going to be down here in a crawl space. Because I know Linux pretty darn good, and I have had that happen multiple times, because this is the model Linux that I grew up on, but I about guarantee you that this uh, has a relay out on the control board, and we should be able to jump the blower wire over to a hot leg and just let it run continuous, and we should be able to get by. This is probably an ADM GF, I bet you, or G24. Let's look. What do we got? It is built in 95, which was the year I started. And it is an ADM GF 3-1, first generation. Holy macaronis. And there is the control board. I would be really surprised if this doesn't have problems. I bet you the air filter is bad too. Let's take a look at that. You just flip it over, it'd be okay on the other side, right? Yeah, it goes all the way in there. All right, so what we'll do here is we will go to wide mode. Here's your blower. And we will take that over here to the fan, to a uh, accessory. And look at that. There goes the blower. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna unhook the low speed. Actually, we'll put the low speed there on. Oh, how they had the cool on low. That's kind of crazy. ECB low, ECB heat. So heat must have been high because it probably had a problem with it probably tripping limit because uh, this is a same manufacturer built my house, built this one, I'm pretty sure. So what we've got, oh, there's an extra gas valve. Yep. So let's go ahead and, oh, I love this nice concrete slab we got here. I'll just put this door on my side to keep the dirt off me. That filter there, it's dirty, looks a little cleaner than this one. Might use that one. Okay, so we want it to run nonstop. Usually I use a jumper. Let's see if I can see a little bit better here because I literally got my flashlight out there in the, uh, yeah, see there's a jumper there on that um, terminal for the transformer. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and jump. They had the low speed on it. So let's go ahead and turn the heat power off here real quick because I got a nice outlet. There we go. Now I'll make it a little easier. I'm going to put it on high speed. We're gonna leave low speed off because if by chance the furnace would come on, which I can't imagine why it would, but if it would, it would possibly blow the motor up because both legs would be energized. So there it goes high. And there it goes, look at that. So now that the blower's running nonstop, we'll make the outside run off the thermostat and we'll be golden. This is why I don't like doing residential no more. All right, so we've got that running nonstop and that'll be just fine. What's up, buddy? And now let's go ahead and turn the cooling on. Set it at about 72, see how that does for them. And let's uh, go outside and see how the unit's running. Okay, it looks like it might be getting ready to rain a little bit out there. So suction line's cold, so that means it's good to go and we can leave now. Or we could probably check the charge. So let's go ahead and check the charge and we'll check the capacitors. So we brought a junk thermostat here just in case. Got contactor just in case. Got my new 550s here. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be raining here for long. Okay, we got it on 410A there. We're on a 35 degree evaporator, which is fairly cooler in there. It's about 75. And it's 95 condensing temperature. We've got our liquid here. I've been starting to letter those and number them with uh, blue paint markers to make it easier because that just seems a pain in the butt. Superheat's 33. I've already bled all the way up to my middle hose here, so we're bled all the way up to there and we're sealed. So when we get done, we'll valve off our liquid, dump it back in, and disconnect. I rinsed all this all out uh, down here in the bottom. We had all kinds of fighters and stuff like that. Technically, we're running a seven degree subcooling. This is 410A, which always loves to take forever to stabilize. So we have us a 30, so we come down to here, 
liquid line minus vapor. You gotta love the way Linux does their crap. You would think you would do subcooling, which if it's TXV, it should be about 10. And if you do an approach, it should be eight. Typical charge here, oh, it should be nine. Okay, so it should be nine. Pressures on 95 degrees, it says it's 80, it says it's 85 degrees out here according to my watch. It should be about three, 330 and 135. We're at 298 and 108. So we're probably just a touch low. You can see that in our subcooling. So chances are I'm probably gonna have to come back and do the board anyway. And we can always add a little bit of refrigerant to it then. Let's go ahead and shut this off and check that capacitor and stuff real quick, which he painted all this crap and didn't do us any favors. Bad homeowner, bad homeowner. Yanked off common and coming down here, we've got 38, 37. And on our other one, we've got 4.7. This is a 45, I believe. What do we got here? Yep, a 40 and five. So we're off by a little bit on the one. So we are right at the breaking point. My feeling is time to change it. They're cheap. And then whether they want to do that, mo whether they want to do that um, control board or we could always wire a relay in there and run G to the relay and power it that way. I mean, that'd be generic, but it'd be cheaper than buying a whole new control board for a uh, 95 furnace. There we go. Let's see what our ampers are. 1.9 there on our fan, which I think is about right. Can't read it. I guess peel off stickers. So thanks a lot, Rick. Uh, he's got the same name as me. So there we go. And 7.2 on the compressor. Uh, we're we're setting fairly decent. We'll go ahead and get off of this thing. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna get ready to rain, unfortunately. So not a whole lot of riding in the Jeep as much as I wanted, but we got this back on for them. And we'll go ahead and get this dump back in. Look at that. Wow, look at all that we lost. It's crazy amounts on there. Uh, so far, 550s have been really good. This is the S series. True Tech Tools, 8% discount code with survival. Check them out, True Tech Tools. Um, so other than that, I figured it's gonna be one of a couple things. It's gonna be a contactor, a motor, capacitor, or low on charge or dirty unit. So that's what it was. That's running. Well, we'll let them know what's going on. And like I said, I'm gonna recommend they just replace the furnace. Uh, he had been talking about it, but I don't like doing that kind of stuff. I didn't even want to run this call, but he got hurt and I wanted to help him out. They have cooling now for the kids and uh, should be good to go. All right, gotta make sure we lock this thing back up for him. Little documentation there. You be good while I'm gone. It's already 73 in here. There's 72, so yeah. All right, well, I'll leave the light on for you. That way you don't get scared, okay? Oh, an Uber. There we go. All right, guys, haven't been recording a whole lot of anything this week. Uh, just not been that exciting. Uh, a lot of just follow-up work, more more work, more install, more, more parts that need to be put on, stuff like that. So here's what you got. You guys seem to like the residential stuff anyway. So until next time, guys, later. All right, this guy just broke five ribs, so he's the guy we was helping out. So anyhow, we came back and we wired it up. So right now we're testing the heat speed, which the heat's running. What we did is we took the normal heat speed out of the control board, came down here to the common on the relay, came out of the relay to the high speed, which is what they had originally. I'm assuming they had problems with the temperature rise. So on the other speed, the cooling, which was low speed, we're gonna go with the normally open and we're gonna power that off of the common going straight up here to where the transformer's at. The transformer, granted I used the same color, which is a no-no, you know, wah, wah, wah. So the coil goes to Y and it goes to common. So when he turns on the outside unit, it's going to automatically energize. And by using this type of relay, there's no back feeding possible. 
So the heat works, so go ahead and turn it back down. And it'll still delay and all that stuff just like normal because all we're doing is leaping power right in and out of that relay. And this is how things were wired back in the day with the fan control. That was how they all were. So if you wanna go ahead and turn on the air conditioning, it'll change speeds. Okay, it has a filter right here. So we'll grab one of these high-end 3M filters. They look kinda of dirty. Yeah, kinda of like the way you said you just washed the outside unit off too. <laughs> oh, there, you hear that click? That's what it's gonna sound like. So that'll get you the blower on and off when it needs to. And yeah, it'll still shut off like normal. So that's what your filter looked like. Yeah, and you dirty. And you had a back, you had a little, you had a little bit backwards, so. Yeah, cause you want the mesh on the side that goes towards the blower. That way, in the, if the thing gets dirty, that mesh right there, that wire, holds it from getting sucked into the furnace. So, theoretically, it don't matter because these are just, there's the same uh, media on either one. Um, actually, you had it right according to their, their thought process, but I, I want to tell you they're... So, there, that's running. Let's go outside and check the charge.